All right, we're on. Okay, Rishab, okay. You're, you have the show. Yes, so uh, the first thing today we should discuss. Okay, so I have access to your uh, machine, Mark, and I wanted to ask what, uh, so general rules, how I should uh, use the Jenkins instance you've provided me. I wanted to ask that first. So, so you are you are welcome to yeah. use that Jenkins instance in any what I would call reasonable way. I would appreciate it if you would not uh, reverse engineer all of the credentials that are inside of it and take those away. All right, that would be really that would be bad behavior. But other, I'm entrusting you okay. that that this is a it uses Jenkins credentials and therefore there are techniques that would let you get get them back out. Please don't steal my credentials. Other than that, you are welcome <laughs> okay. to do it. It is a destructible instance. I reconstruct them all the time. I reserve the right to reconstruct them at any time. I destroy them and, and restart okay. them very frequently. So don't be surprised if sometime you were doing something and all of the history of the thing gets destroyed. So, okay. but, okay. but you are welcome to do, you are, you are welcome to use the resources that are here. There you are welcome to define new jobs. Uh, if you would like the job to persist over, you know, over a potential restart, let me know and I will archive it into the definition so that then the next okay. time I restart it, there are also multiple copies of that if you need access to a separate copy. If you'd like a fresh copy, I run fresh copies on other machines and I could give you access to those other machines as well. I, I think this is, uh, this is okay for me right now. I don't need a fresh copy. Okay. So I think mainly I would want to use it for running the benchmarks. Uh, but I noticed there are quite a lot of machines there. I would want to use it for that. And also the second thing was the JMH report plugin. So we were thinking of uh, adding that to that Jenkins instance. So, so my question was that I would have to, um, I would have to, uh, what I would have to do is to access the Jenkins uh, directory, the home Jenkins directory of this instance. And uh, add the uh, HPI, JPI to the replace. Add the JPI to the plugins uh, directory in the in the instance to uh, integrate this plugin inside the Jenkins. That no. is what I did for my local instance. You're 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 much you're doing much much too much hard work for that. What you do is you open the plugin manager, find the available tab, and click the JMH plugin okay. and install it. <laughs> Don't, yeah, no, okay. yes, yes, you, you described the hard way to do it. Do it the easy way and we'll, we'll take care of it later yes, with of course. making it permanent. Just, of course, of just course. install okay. it so you can use it. I think it's actually already there, but if it's not, go ahead and install it. And you are welcome okay. to install any other plugins you need. If you install a plugin and it, um, it disrupts the instance, okay, no problem. Uh, if you install a plugin and I, I strongly disagree, I'll let you know. Okay. Okay. Yeah, no, okay. Yes, we, so, we will have yeah. the Chuck Norris plugin. Thanks very much, Justin. That's great. No, I, I do not have the Chuck Norris plugin installed, nor do oh. I have the Bruce Schneier plugin installed, nor. <laughs> no. <laughs> so. Okay. Uh, the next thing on the agenda was that uh, so I raised a PR along back for uh, two or three benchmarks. And I, uh, what I uh, assumed was that when I raised that PR, the benchmarks will uh, run on this uh, CI Jenkins IO because uh, the branch was GSOC hyphen hyphen something GMH. So, uh, uh, so the, but the benchmark that stage is not being run uh, oh. by uh, on the CI Jenkins IO. And I was I was not sure why is that happening. I actually have the PR open there. I was looking at the Jenkins file. We do have the condition where we run all the, we accept the branches which are related to GSOC, but still it is not uh, running for the PR number mm -hmm. this one. So I tried, uh, I've had multiple commits in this PR, two or three benchmarks I added and it was not running. I think I will not be able to show you that. So, so I was actually not able to figure out what could be a reason for that. Is it because I, I don't know. I have actually, I don't have a clue. Why would well, happen? so, so is the, I just, just let's, let's be sure we confirm it here. Okay, good. So could you go back to the, uh, to the 
the Jenkins file definition. I wonder if what we've got there is a file regular file expression and what we need is a regular expression. Okay. Because it may just be that we're not matching the uh, we're not matching the branch name. Yeah, isn't GSOC dash asterisk? That's a file name style regular expression. In order to match anything after the dash, wouldn't it need to be j dash dot asterisk? Yeah, I think, yeah, that would be one character. I think so. What 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 that regular expression says, and I should have read that, seen this when we code reviewed it, right? Sorry for for not even thinking of it. That's that says okay. GSOC I, I followed by dash zero or more times. So if you name the branch GSOC dash 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 or GSOC dash dash, that would probably have, have matched it. But but we need I think we need an extra dot in there just looking at it now. Okay. So you want okay, to submit I, the I, pull I, I request like. to fix that or if you'd like I can commit it directly to the master branch to, to fix that. I I'm not sure we need a PR. Request, to, I think. Okay. Sorry okay, about that. I, I think that, that, that that's it's, it's my mistake Mark. it's not yours. Uh, yeah, well, come on. Code yeah. reviewers have some responsibility, and, and I, I clearly I didn't didn't fill mine here. Okay. What's okay, the so difference I, between I, the double yeah, equals I, tilde and the uh, single equals tilde? I don't know. I uh, actually, I, I added that. I am not sure why. I was actually looking at a uh, groovy documentation, and I was doing it, and I did not. Ah. Uh, yeah, so uh, another I'll, failing I'll of the code reviewer, talk. Justin. Oh, that's good. <laughs> so I, I, well, this is I'll still a special one in the PR in tier. Uh, CPS is like its own, generally groovy, but uh, yeah, with caveats. <laughs> yeah, it, it's clearly a DSL. It is a domain-specific language. It just happens to be based on groovy, yeah. Okay, I cannot remember why I did this, but I'll... I'll I look for it and I'll probably add the information in the PR. Great. Thanks. Okay. okay, so um, this is all again. So this is more of a, not something to discuss me, but yeah, so I was, so I was, th I, w I, I did say that I would create a class, a utility in the benchmarks module, which would validate those benchmarks functionally. So, um, so I've created a class which uh, right now it uh, offers two kind of validation. The first is to, to check the number of references if we are running um, some uh, uh, an operation which is related to references. So we basically compare number of references are correct or not for, for a particular repository. The second one is um, the size of the repository that is the um, dot get size. So of the directory. So uh, so what I noticed was that I was actually using uh, the file utils API to calculate the size of the repository uh, directory, and um, and it was it that operation was included in the benchmark itself. So I was a little uh, then I I thought of benchmarking the files util dot um, uh, the file utils dot uh, estimates uh, estimating the size of the directory API. To actually check what kind of contribution is it, what kind of overhead is it adding to the whole benchmark, and and I think it's not a surprise that it's it's just adding a milli. Uh, so the benchmark result it said that it's adding a millisecond to the uh, the, the operation is taking a millisecond for. Uh, I, I actually checked it for a 300 MB size repository uh, dot get directory. So um, it, it's just taking a millisecond. So I, I'm Results wise, it wouldn't make a difference if it's a if it's a git fetch maybe, but for a small operation, it might. Uh, I think it's just it's just an observation for myself that I should not include anything. Even if I have to validate, I would have to find a way where I do not use uh, the benchmark itself to uh, validate any uh, parameter. Yeah. And that seems fair. The, uh... A, ben a micro benchmark. The goal is to have it be as small a unit as you can possibly test, right? It, it's so. So I think yeah. I think you're right. It's the the concept seems to assume that the 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 thing the benchmark as written is doing valid things, and we have to do it by inspection or by observation. That seems fair to mm -hmm. me. Yeah, and um, 
So the last topic today is the uh, abstract get SCM source. I've been exploring the SCM APIs. So actually, I was uh, for uh, our uh, size estimated class. So I was looking at. Uh, I, I think I found something interesting. I was looking at how the multi-branch uh, projects they they are working. How is it fetching the branches? So um, so first, I want to confirm something. Uh, just a second, where was the... I actually wanted to confirm the locking uh, cache lock feed. Where, I'm not a good sign. It's a big, this is a big class and it's very difficult to find a particular. Uh, discover branches. Yeah, so uh, I'll actually talk about the locking of the cache after this because this is this is what I can find right now, and I'll I'll discuss this first. So uh, what I can see is that we use a, a functionality provided by JGit, uh, uh, RevWalk, which is basically walking the commit tree to. Um, to actually, we we want the branches and we want other references. So if we have, if someone is uh, building up, scanning the PRs and building the project. So a multi branch project, according to my understanding, it works like if I have uh, if I have multiple branches, it would uh, scan those branches, and then uh, if they each of them have uh, they have a Jenkins file, it would run the Jenkins file and the build. That is uh, the very basic. Uh, definition of a multi-branch project and if we have other references like PRs we want to build upon we would have pull requests and it would scan them and then run uh, build on those pull requests as well uh, so 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 what I can see is that we uh, first of all what I want to ask by seeing this class is that uh, Git can uh, CLI Git can also provide these functionalities Individually, the rev walk is actually it, it, it does a lot of things. It's not just well, I could see that it is parsing the commit. One of the things I could see that it's parsing the commit while walking, we can do this. So, and then I then I saw that we have a functionality in CLI get called uh, get rev parse command, which would do the same thing. So, the question I have is why are we using rev walk? Is it because this is uh, uh, the git is providing all these functionalities, but we don't have uh, uh, a class to do it. Like we don't have, we, we would have to add similar functionalities into a particular um, place and that is, uh, JGit is already providing us that. Is this the reason we, we're using that book or uh, is there another reason I'm not aware of right now? Yeah, I, I think it's, a, and, it's, yeah. it's, JGit's interfaces are designed for and very well thought out for the way that Java programmers want to interact with things. And so I think that when, when this was implemented, it was detected that, hey, the JGit interfaces are just cleaner and easier to use than the Git client plugin interfaces. So let's use JGit. And, and I think it was a good choice. Okay. It was a very wise and sensible choice. It also avoids, avoids the overhead of launching a separate sub process to interact with the, with the Git repository in small ways. Right, this thing can crack it open and let JGit do a bunch of caching for it in the Java process. Oh, that, does that address it, your I, question? It 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 does. It does. Yes. It does. So um, so I, I think my main uh, my the main uh, thing I, I was thinking about was that if we're using something like this. Do we want to benchmark the operations we're performing here when we have considerable amount of references? This is uh, because I think we have seen how Git LS Remote works for um, the number of references. We've seen the equation between the number of references and uh, size of the repository. It's it's not uh, it's not uh, of course it's it's linear in the sense that it increases as the size of the repository. Uh, the number of references increase, the time increases to for those references. But uh, since we would, 
I am actually I haven't seen Rev work in depth, but what I this is just a high level uh, thought that I have is that we could probably um, benchmark the Rev work the functionalities we're using from Rev work and compare them with how CLI Git works. Although with just what you've said, I I I I think it's not needed, but um, is is it something we should explore? Because since this is something JGate is providing, and uh, with whatever experience I've had, I it's just I thought that okay, if this is provided by JGate, and the same thing can be provided by Git, how is is it possible that Git would perform CLI Git would perform better in uh, in areas which we haven't explored yet? Good, good question, and I think it's it's unlikely that in this use case, we would find some place where we say, oh, this is significantly enough faster to justify reworking the implementation to use CLI Git. Uh, but but it's, it's a valid question. Uh, I, I can't confidently say, I mean, we know, that, we know that for small repositories, fetch is faster with JGit, and there comes a, a threshold where fetch becomes slower with JGit, I would be shocked yes. if, if the operations in JGit for these RevWalk kind of things were dramatically slower in particular because JGit is pretty commonly used to implement things like the Garrett code review systems back end. And therefore it does an awful lot of RevWalk. And so I would have assumed that the JGit authors had done quite a bit to make sure that that thing works well. Oh, okay. So um, maybe what I can do is to just uh, um, uh, to explore this option, decide a benchmark. It would not take with a lot of time to uh, maybe uh, benchmark a certain functionality under certain conditions. Oh yeah, I think particularly if you can see a way to do it with without a lot of effort, I think that would be a real positive, yeah. another place to say, hey, I'm gonna try a benchmark of something that's a higher level than just fetch. This is, this is, and, exactly. and this spot is a, this, this particular area is a place where we've got potential for cash contention. So you might even be at a higher level where you say, I'm gonna try, yeah. So yes, interesting if you can do a benchmark without a lot of cost. So uh, when you when you're talking about the cache contention here, Mark, you're, what you're saying is that uh, for a multi-branch project, when, when we create it first, the first thing we do is we try to find a cache. If we find that, then we um, we create a client and then do all of this work. And if we don't find it, we fetch uh, the repository and then create a client and do that. So why we have a, assuming that we have a cache? Uh, so the contention it happens while we're locking it. Uh, is is the is that the area where the issue comes, or uh, for multiple branches? No, I, I think that at least the cache contention claims that I've heard were were in the operating case where the clone already exists. There's been a change on the remote repository, and now each of the branches of that remote repository are being evaluated. Are there changes there? And they tend to build a stack of, of people who all want to access the cache, cache copy. They each want to get their own lock on the cache copy. They lock it, update it, unlock it, lock it, update it, unlock it. And, and at least that's what I thought was, was had been in the report was, hey, if I have 150 branches, and with 150 branches, if there's a change on one of those branches that gets detected by the GitHub um, branch source plugin, it will invoke a, a check of all of them. And if it will now process, and it may process changes on many branches, and they will contend with each other for access to the cache. Okay. Okay, I understand. Okay, um, I, I think I need to uh, read more about uh, locking, caching, cache resources, and because I am not, uh, I haven't read too much about it. I was, I just uh, actually there was a GSOC idea which was related to um, implementing a system which would distribute the caches. Uh, right, and, and and this is not this is not that 
this is decidedly uh, it is and, not that yeah. and and in terms of in terms of your project i wouldn't i'm not i'm not personally concerned about this layer if you want to shift your focus back to the lower layers that you initially described, that's fine too. There, there, is, there isn't a requirement that we have to improve this piece. We're looking for way, looking for things to improve. And if you find that this could use improvement, great. But if not, okay, okay, uh, that's okay. I'll, 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 may, I'll just read about it and I'll possibly try to. Uh, I'm not sure how to reproduce it. Is it is it something reproducible? Have you, uh, uh, or is it is it a random uh, event? So it's not it's not like it's going to happen every time. So is it like if I have 150 branches, it is going to happen for sure, or uh, or is this something that happens randomly? And we're not yeah. sure why is it happening. So yeah. so I'm pretty sure that I can see it, and I'm pretty sure that I can see it on that computer that you have access to. Um, okay. If I run, if if I let's see, well, actually, is everybody okay? I could switch and share my screen and show you the job where you'll see it, if that will help you. Sure, Mark. Yeah, sure, Mark. So here, let's just put this up, okay. and what I'm going to do is bring up that job. Can you see my screen? Yes. Oh, oops, wrong one. It would help if I use the correct. This one. Okay, so I have a thing called bugs pipeline checks. Uh, let's make this so that it's actually readable on the screen size there. Is that easier? <laughs> bugs pipeline yeah, checks. In bugs pipeline checks, I have a repository named Jenkins bugs. And then it's represented by different protocols that access the same repository. Any one of those, if you look here, and we look at the scan repository log, it scans 150 or so branches looking for changes. Okay. And, and I have um, scripts that cause changes in many of these repositories in, in roughly linear time. It just, it causes a change and then sleeps and then causes another change. And what I will see is that when I look at one of these jobs running, it will show a long pause in the console output where it says this, branch indexing. Oh. Okay. And, and okay. that branch indexing, and I think it's this branch indexing plus this, and I have a suspicion that there's a long pause between this and this. But again, I'm not sure so, that this is in scope for your for the project you're working on, Rishab. I, I'm I show it to you. Your goal, I think, is to find areas to improve plugin performance. I'm not sure that this should be your first priority yet. Uh, okay, I, I get that, Mark. I get that. I, I, this is not going to be my first priority. I was just I was interested in how um, what the issue was because I actually did not quite understand it well. And right now, I understand it when you showed it. Okay, so um, uh, so uh, so what I'm going to do is uh, uh, after so I, I think I've read enough. I'm going to uh, start uh, creating a prototype for the um, the estimator size task. Uh, I'll do that the first task, coding task. The second is I'll uh, create benchmarks for uh, to compare uh, the walking uh, the commit graph walking uh, functionalities between uh, both JLigit and JGit. Yeah, these two things, and I, I, I don't think we have uh, any other thing to. Uh, does does CLI get provide that walking yeah. functionality, or does only JGit has that? I just check like JGit has that revoc, and I think that is pretty awesome thing. Yeah. I just check with yeah, for the Git CLI. I was I was checking, so there are com commands, multiple commands which would provide the same functionality. I haven't checked each one of them, but uh, I, I am sure that we have commands which would uh, there, there's a command which would print the commit graph there's a command which would walk uh, the uh, commit history I mean it's the git rev walk command so yeah so so I'll see I'll see more into the code where what uh, operations I, I would need to benchmark would be useful to benchmark and then uh, 
add this to PR. And the first thing I'm going to do is to raise the PR for to correct the Jenkins file uh, regular expression. Yeah. So I think that's it from my side for today. Uh, anything you guys want to discuss or the, because we have five minutes left. So or you could just end it. You're okay running the you'll run the session next Wednesday and next Friday from your your Zoom account? Yes, yes, Mark. I'm, okay. I'm comfortable with that. Great. So Thank I'll, you for I'll letting me take I'll, a week uh, off. That, that's okay, Mark. It's, it's well deserved, I think. So, uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, I'm going to mail the link to uh, each of the mentors. The Zoom link. I'll, I'll create that. I'm going to create an event. Uh, Google Canvas event. I'll do that and uh, for Wednesday and for Friday. Great. Okay. So, if there's nothing, then we could. So, uh, Rishabh, hello. Yeah, yes, Omikar. Uh, so, do you need uh, like my help for creating those empty like uh, repositories for the benchmarking purpose, or you'll be using yes. those? So we actually, uh, yeah, this is one potential um, uh, discussion we actually missed. Uh, so, um, so what you're talking, I think uh, we should. Uh, as to explain the topic first. The topic is that we, uh, so for the bench, benchmarking strategy, we were more, more focused on the size of the repository. And uh, now we want to move on to parameters like the number of branches, uh, the commit history. And, um, and so what Omkar is proposing is to create some repositories with the constant size, uh, but a different number of branches. Uh, so in that, so, so uh, when we use the benchmarks I have for these repositories, what we could find out would be how much the number of branches uh, they create performance overhead, or they they contribute to the uh, performance of Git fetch. So uh, so that would be uh, I think that's an interesting thing we could do. And Omkar, if you could if you're if you're creating the repositories, I I. I as far as I remember, you have created a repository with uh, with five thousand branches. Yep. So uh, I I think what would be uh, I think what we could do is that we could have a repository with uh, maybe ten branches. Then uh, then we go to fifty, then five hundred, and then five thousand. Yeah. So what I was just waiting for approval from Mark for that particular thing. So I'll, uh, over this weekend, I'll be creating those sample repositories for you. Definitely. Okay. Thank, thank you so much for doing that. Omka. No problem. So, um, so once you have those, I'll, uh, I'll uh, edit my benchmarks and we can run the experiment then. Is that uh, okay with everyone? Okay. So, that's it for today. Thank you, guys. Thank you right. Letting go is great, Mark. I'm sure it's going to be awesome. Yeah, well, and if not, it will be COVID-19 makes things interesting. Even if they're not awesome, they are certainly interesting. So there you go. <laughs> See everybody. I'll post the recording link. Bye, Mark.